We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello and welcome to Sorted. Today we have teamed up with Tri Lamb in challenging Jamie and Mike to the ultimate kebab battle. And if expectations weren't high enough, our chef James will be judging the most delicious kebab and naming our kebab king. You will kneel at my feet as I am the kebab king. I have loftier ambitions. We're gonna give you an entire hour of active cooking time, which means that while you're putting things in the oven or under the grill, we will stop the clock. We want the biggest, boldest flavours, the most creative use of fresh ingredients, and two dishes that will be worthy of putting the regrettable late night kebab to bed forever. Are you ready? In three, two, one, kebab. So, I'm changing tact. I normally go big, I do too much, I get sweaty and I get stressed out. So instead, I'm going big in flavours, I'm going family style, and my dish is broken into three components. Amazingly, beautifully spiced, charred lamb koftas. I'm taking inspiration from the Greek style, so I'm serving it with a Greek style salad. Delicious cucumbery, garlicky tzatziki, and charred pita breads. I am going all out with my kebab, with something that people don't usually make at home, I'm going to make a lamb donna kebab wrap with chips inside it. You're not reinventing anything. I am. You're reinventing like 10 years ago, your uni days. I'm gonna use a rotisserie grill for that authentic experience, but you can do this under a normal grill or even bake it like a meatloaf in the oven. First things first, I need to make my meat mixes. I'm gonna put onion and garlic and some spices in a blender, whiz them all up. Lamb is one of those meats that just takes on all the flavours. I think of like lamb tagines and slow cooked. I always love that kind of mixture of dried fruit and cinnamon and spice with lamb. Now, interesting you've gone for things like cinnamon in this to kind of almost play on that. Yep. Mike, why are you grating a cucumber? So basically, for this tzatziki, um, I need to grate a cucumber into a colander lined with paper because I'm going to basically drain and squeeze out all of the moisture in the cucumber because if it's a damp cucumber and it goes into my yogurt, it's just gonna leak everywhere. I've got my yogurt in a bowl and now I am grating in garlic. The reason I'm doing this now is because I want that yogurt to basically take on all that amazing garlicky flavor. I'm adding extra virgin olive oil and white wine vinegar, giving it a stir, and this goes into the fridge to sit for half an hour to take on all those amazing flavors. That's one third of your three items done, Mike, and one third of your time gone. I don't tell him, but I've still got more stuff to do on that entire thing. <laughs> now, lamb can have a reputation for being an expensive meat. I'm using two different cuts of lamb in my kebab. I'm using mince and lamb steaks, which are actually cheaper than you might think, and are perfect for the kebab because they are packed full of flavor and they will take on all of the flavor of the spices that I'm gonna add into them as well. The challenge for Jamie will then be cooking this perfectly because what will happen is as it cooks, it will kind of stick together as protein does, but if he overcooks it and dries out the mince, although there's a nice level of kind of pastiness with the onion as well, when it carves, it could crumble instead of slice. I'm gonna blitz up my lamb mince and these spices, oregano, paprika, cumin, coriander, allspice, cayenne pepper. What the, you used all the cinnamon. There's no cinnamon left. Mate, I left you some cinnamon. There's a fifth of a tablespoon of, of cinnamon. And how much do you need? Half a tablespoon, so I might get away with it. <laughs> if you wanna try and pick some out of my spice blend, be my guest. That spice blend needs as much help as it can get, so. I'm also adding grated onion. I can feel my eyes going. I can feel them going. Fresh parsley, garlic, and mint to the processor. I'm pulsing this together in a food processor. Um, it's really important not to overwork it. So it's nice and mushed. I'm going to leave it. Having whizzed up my onion, garlic, and spice blend into a thick paste, that's gonna go into my lamb mince. I'm gonna take my lamb steaks, and I'm going to cut them in half, and then butterfly them to get really lovely, thin steaks. That will go into a separate mixing bowl with the remaining quarter of my blend. How are you getting on, mate? 
it's all right, this is all prep, and now I'm, gonna, I'm about to get to the nervy bit, which is construction, which I'm terrified of. I've added milk into my mince as well. To start this, I need to thread an apple onto my rotisserie skewer, and then I can start layering up my meat. Thirty minutes of active cooking time gone. Oh wow! So is this a uh, this traditional or is this a a, a spathnik? It's a spath special. Yeah. I'm not aiming for traditional. Um, Doner kebabs have centuries worth of history, and I am not even going to try and say that I understand all of it. But going down to what the UK have done to them over the last. 50, 60 years, which I think most of the world will agree is probably ruined them. So I'm trying to resurrect the UK's reputation. So, and you're doing that by putting chips in a wrap and putting meat on an apple. Mike's challenge is going to be to not overwork the meat so that it doesn't become tough, but also work it enough so it's not going to fall off the skewer. And there's a, there's a tight balance to, to get there. These just smell incredible, absolutely incredible, before they've even touched anything hot. Are you sure you're not smelling mine? <laughs> <laughs> Again, these go into a fridge and they rest to take on all that flavour. I feel like I'm in the film Ghost. <laughs> I've got Hang Patrick on. Swayze, there we go. I mean... My lamb Christmas tree's finished. I'm going to add my bottom skewer on to keep that in place. That will then go upside down, which is really the right way up, into the rotisserie grill. Put that on for an hour or so, see how we get on. Off it goes. Whilst that's spinning around, I've got a few minutes to start cooking everything else that's gonna go into my kebab. First of all, oven chips, then a white sauce and a red sauce. Job done. Both of you pretty much done on your lamb. 20 minutes remaining. Certainly in the UK, I feel like lamb is, is that thing that's saved for a Sunday. It's like a Sunday oh, yeah. roast. It's the thing that you remember your grandparents used to do. Now, every other street food dish that I love centers around lamb. Excellent in dumplings, tossed through biang biang noodles style, almost like a northern yeah. Chinese, Mongolian, yeah. from all over the world. It's just super versatile, but I'll, I'll put my hand up. I don't, I don't think I eat it often enough. As the oil starts to drip down, I can take my pastry brush, start to baste it. In a kebab shop, I've never seen them get a pastry brush out. I have to say, I think you've done a great job to get it that far, because that looks excellent. Well, no pressure, but you've got 12 minutes of active cooking time left. I've chopped up my potatoes into chip shapes. They're gonna go onto a baking tray with a fair bit of oil, salt, into an oven, 225 degrees, 30 to 40 minutes. I am currently putting together my Greek style salad. So that's peppers, cucumbers, with the middles taken out. Tomatoes, but the middles kept in. Finely sliced onion. I've got oregano, olive oil, red wine vinegar, good pinch of salt. Gonna hold some feta back to go over the top at the end, make it look really nice. One of the things I really love about getting a kebab is the choice of sauces that you get. I'm gonna make two sauces today. One is a white, minty, dilly, yogurty sauce. Dilly, dilly. Dilly, dilly sauce. And the other is a chilli sauce classic. I'm at the point where I can stop the timer now. Stop the timer. Woo, hang on. Wait. Stop, paused. Okay, all that I need to do now is griddle my lamb and then save enough time to plate it all up and remember to put my cucumber and my dill through my tzatziki at the end. You have five and a half minutes left on your clock to do that. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping to have a little bit longer than that. I want really nice crispy bits, so the fact that they're sticking means that I get some nice crispy bits at the end. Jay, you were single-handedly revolutionising the UK kebab. And what I see you've done there is, not only are you putting chips in the wrap, he's putting mashed potato in there as well. Brits love a good bit of mash. Perhaps with the exception of lamb neck, which mm -hmm. is quite a lean cut and gorgeous because of it, lamb is very forgiving when it comes to cooking, in the sense that it's often got a lot of fat or cooked on the bone like a chop or a rack of ribs. And therefore, getting the cooking levels is important but surprisingly easy, because it has got that extra bit of some margin yeah. for error, especially with long, slow cooks. Next up, my chilli sauce. It's pretty much exactly the same process. Onion, garlic, chilies, chopped tomatoes, oil, vinegar, sugar, and some big tomatoes, all into a food processor. Whiz them up. 
Baz, can we have a time check for Jamie? That'll be two minutes uh, now. He's not leaving himself much time to plate this kebab up. That could use some more chilli. Right, Jamie, you have a minute left. Do you want to stop? I can stop acting time whenever you want. Jay, you're being a mic Please. right now. Stop. <laughs> Think about Jamie. it. At what point do you go? Stop. Right. 50 seconds. I genuinely don't know if I can slice that and construct in 50 seconds. I believe in you. Cooking time. No stress, it's not being timed. I've got my koftas, they've been covered in veg oil, and now I'm going to griddle them in a pan. It's gonna get hot, it's gonna get smoky, but I'm looking to get amazing char lines around those incredible koftas. I have a bit of a problem here. I've picked a griddle pan that's too big for my skewers. So I'm going to take the skewers out and just griddle the koftas as is. I'll wash the skewers um, and then I'll put them back into the kebabs at the very end for plating to make them look nice. <laughs> active time, start, active time, stop. So you've got 49 seconds left. Mike, you've got three minutes, 13 left. Let's finish off this tzatziki. Cucumber into the delicious garlicky yogurty mix. Gonna roughly chop up some dill, put that through too. One minute, 20 left for Mike. 44 seconds, Jay, are you ready? We will see how this bit goes. Go. Look, 20 seconds. I'd stop there. My, Jay, 15 seconds. Done. Do you want my 26 seconds? I love your 26 seconds. Then have them, because we are friends. <laughs> Magnetic watch strap. Give you me 10 seconds. Nine, Nine eight, eight, seven, <laughs> six, six five, five. Yeah, I don't need it. Four. It's done. Three, two, one. one. Double kebab, step back. I mean, they look pretty good from here, but I think we should get me some sexies. They look good and they smell good, but they're also going to be devoured and judged by the judgiest judge. That's the bit I'm dreading. These look amazing. Both of them. They, they look awesome. Don't sound so genuine because I don't know how to receive that. Should we start here? Because I feel like that's gonna get messy. Cheers. 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 It all tastes great. The tzatziki especially. The lamb with the tzatziki and the char lines that you've got on it. Perfect. I feel like the kofta and the Greek salad maybe could have done with a little bit more seasoning. I actually can't argue with that at all. Cheers. Cheers. He wasn't holding back on flavours there. And they've had time to do their thing. I love how there's so much going on in that lamb kofta, but you can still taste the lamb. Good job, man. Oh, I've got so much to do. Show us what you got. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely excellent. You get a little bit of chew with the steak, mm -hmm. and then you've got all that mince holding it together, and it all just kind of works together, and chips in a kebab works. I'm really tasting the mint, mm -hmm. the, like the dry mint in that white sauce, which is really good. The hot sauce could probably be hotter, oh, yeah. but everything together tastes amazing. <laughs> completely different texture on the lamb. The lamb, leg steak and the mince, the combination is really good. His spicy sauce, though it's not that spicy, it does bring a nice freshness to the kebab. It's got a tang to it. Mm. They're very clean kebabs, which is a weird thing to say. Kind of glad I'm not the one making the final call this week. Oh, I don't know. You've both hit the brief so well. They're both fresh. They're both making really good use of lamb. And they're both great kebabs in different ways. You're making me nervous. Nah. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to give it to Jamie. Purely for ambition. I think, I think you pushed yourself hard and they both taste so fantastic that 
I think I've got to give it to you on just your ideas. Well done, mate. Thank you. Oh, I'm happy with that. We hope you enjoyed our ultimate lamb kebab battle. We know what James thought, but we'd love to know what you think. Who would your winner have been? Comment down below and let us know. And if you've tried any incredible lamb dishes from where you're from, please send them to us on Twitter or comment them down below so that we can check them out. A big thank you to Try Lamb for the cooking challenge. If you want to find out more about the Try Lamb campaign, all the links are in the description box below. Should we make another kebab? I mean, not other than there's a lot of kebabs there. Should we come back to my kebab shop? Why didn't you just say, should we make another of your kebabs? It was the winner, to be fair. Before you go, just a quick shout to say thanks to all of you who are using and sending us your thoughts on our PAX app. We wanted to create a tool to help you boss your midweek meals, cut down on food waste and reduce the cost of your weekly food shop. And you are helping us do just that. So thank you. We want to make this as accessible as possible right now. So if you haven't tried it, you can now for a full month absolutely free. The link is in the description box below. And now for the bloop. Look, don't make me out to be the bad guy. I'm not the one. <laughs> I can't even finish that sentence. I'm so sorry. Sorry. No, that was terrible.